and section applications and modeling. So if you paid attention when we talked about the whole um, last section, this y equals c e to the kt was a solution to this differential equation. If we have a patient is given this drug warfarin and it's intravenously given to them at the rate of 0.5 per hour and it leaves the body at the rate of about 2% per hour. There's a nice way to think about this that they talk about in this chapter. It's just the rate of change is the rate in minus the rate out. Okay, so if I'm looking at the rate in, and after I did this, I thought, how nice. These are Christmas colors. Merry Christmas. Hey, Hello. Christmas already? I don't Christmas. Corey, I swear I'm not skipping. Be there in five. He probably can't get in because the guy's messing with the door. All right, so. Lock the door. Barricaded. He doesn't listen to these. All right, so rate in minus, rate in minus the rate. And so if I go and I put these numbers in, this is the rate that was going in. This is the rate 2% of what's already. So the Q here is the quantity, the amount that's in the body, okay, after T hours is given. And so now I have this differential equation. Remember, a lot of students don't like these because there's no T. If I work backwards and I get my um, general solution, that has the T because my quantity here is a function of t. I thought I heard somebody knocking. All right, and so of course if the initial quantity, again q, is how much is in, in the blood, um, if, if this is small, then the rate the drug is excreted is less than the rate that's entering the body, then this would be a positive value, okay? In other words, if this is going to be less than this value. If, the, if this is greater than the rate out, then the rate of and which I just said, then the rate of change, this whole thing is going to be positive. And so the drug, um, the quantity of the drug in the body is increasing. So we're adding more. T so if the rate out, though, if this quantity is very large, meaning there's a lot in here, it would make sense this piece bigger than this piece. So this could be negative. Now, what happens with this, of course, with any drug is this is going to even out eventually where my rate in is going to equal my rate out and when that happens I get what in a few slides which I know Nemo people need. So for a small Q the quantity will increase until the rate what I just said the rate in equals the rate out or for a large Q the quantity will decrease. So in other words it's reaching some value there. If there's too much in there it's going to start to lower down. If there's not enough it's going to raise up to this level. And so I'm going to tell you if the amount of warfarin in the body is initially 25 milligrams, then you could see if you solve this for Q, then the drug will stay constant at 25 milligrams. Now, what I think is easier to see with this, we look at the differential equation because we said when the rate in equals the rate out. So if I plug in this initial value of 25, Okay, so if I plug this in, then I see this, my rate in equals my rate out, and so the uh, rate of change that's happening now is actually zero. And this is what's called, I think only the NEMO team has to do this, the equilibrium solution, that they have to basically find this, and, it's, and basically that's it. Where does the rate in equal the rate out, or where does this rate of change equal zero? Easiest to see by a graph. Okay, so by a graph, and you guys did things like this where you had some drug as, as it lowers, it reaches this equilibrium. As it increases, it'll never go above that. So this is what's happening here with your favorite slope fields. So I want to look at some initial, an initial quantity, meaning of 20, 25, and 30 milligrams, and see what's going to actually happen. And you can see that by the actual graph. And as this one is called exponential decay because it's, it's going down to this equilibrium point. So hopefully you remember, I know it's been a while, from separation of variables lecture, we found that this is a solution to this. Now on your test, I'm not going to give you this, uh, something like this, and say prove that this is a solution. Some of you probably could do it, but I'm not going to ask you to do something like that. Justin, yes? Oh, wait. What's that? For A, is it going to be, is it a number or is it a very... It, it'll be a number, yes. And so the only difference here is if you remember when we looked at just this piece right here last time, 
uh, we said that this C was the initial value. Well, in this case, if I look at the differential equation, this is actually the Y minus A is the initial amount of drug in the, or whatever, uh, the initial amount. So I want to write this general solution to this differential equation with Q sub, an initial values. That's what all of these are. Initial values of 20, 25, 30. I knew you were skipping. <laughs> and so I want this to look like that, basically. So as you can see, and which is nice to use the same variables, Q works great because it means quantity. All I need to do then is get a Q there, so I factor out a negative 0 0.02. I'm, tr whoa. I'm trying to get this right here to look like my differential equation. And so I see this Q here, okay, with this number in front of it, but I need just a Q. So if I divide it out, factored out a negative 0 0.02, then it would actually give me my Q that I want. And... <laughs> You can leave the door. Is the guy gone? You can leave the door open. I don't know. There was a guy. Up. I swear there was a guy, right? <laughs> like, what guy? All right. And so, so that's all I've done, done here is factored this out. And so now this gives, gives it to me in my actual form. So as you can see, we said this piece right here was the initial amount. And you can see right away when that hits 25, that's when we hit the equilibrium. So now I have this. And take my differential equation, okay, so this looks just like this, my differential equation, and I can turn it into my general solution. So those kind of words you need to know, and yeah, I will send you something a little better. I just wanted to give you something to start to look at. Probably tomorrow I can send you something a little better with problems, exact problems that'll be like on your test. But I might give you a differential equation and say find the general solution. I say words, um, you know, like the original function, uh, position function. I say position probably more in, in my other <laughs> calculus class. But you just need to understand what these words mean. So basically, I'm not going to give you something like this that you look at that and say, well, how would I figure out how to get that? I would give you something that you take the antiderivative of. So I may not say that in words. I might say, find the antiderivative. Or I may not do the little squiggly thing that would tell you to find antiderivative. I might say, give me the general solution. All of those things mean the same thing. Yes? Right. Okay, so we wouldn't have to like, guess the C, though, right? Like, try to figure out. Right. And, and so in other words, and you're going to see like on the graphs, we just kind of dump the C off to the side and just say, let it equal 1. But yeah, something like that you wouldn't know. Or I would have to do like I've given you here, which we're going to do next. I'd have to give you some initial values. So you would have to solve for C. Okay? And what we're going to do here. So I have my um, initial value equals 20. I want to find a particular solution. So that's the difference. The general solution, everything's variables. And then a particular solution starts with an initial quantity. It's been asleep. <laughs> okay, you're just taking it all in. Okay. <laughs> all right, and so in other words, I plug in my value of 20 here. And then in this case, at my initial time would be zero, and here's where I would solve for C. So as you can see, Rachel, I got to give you something, right? Because there's no way you can just guess what that value is. And then you'd go through and you'd, and I get, because this, of course, is going to become. Um, zero, and so e to the zero power is one, and then subtract, so I get my value of c. So then at u of c, and this is where I said when, if, if you wanted to graph these, and I, you know, I would suggest it, um, you guys know you can bring calculators on, on the test, is if you're graphing this, first of all, you need the equilibrium, and I give that to you, but I'm going to show you here in a minute. I won't always give it to you. There is a way for you to find it. But I would graph this, and then your other graphs, in this case the 20, shouldn't go above it. If it goes above it, then something went wrong here with finding your constant, because we're saying it's reaching that. And so then we do the next one. We do 25. So we just plug in. We get our value of uh, C. Probably didn't need to write that there, but as you can see, um, if I'm at 25, we said that was equilibrium, so that would make sense that I'm at that 25 line. And then to 30, okay, so all I'm doing is solving for my C. I have my 
solution here. So this is this started with a general solution and then it became a particular solution for a particular C. Okay, that was the difference. The general solution was for any C and then a particular solution for, in this case, this value of C. All right, so let's get to the equilibrium solutions. This is a constant and in other words, to me it's the easiest way of thinking you're going you're gonna to take a drug until it reaches a certain level. You're going to stop taking it until it reaches a certain level. It's like why they say take, you know, four aspirins, don't take eight of them, you know, basically. And when you get to that level, you're going to reach this equilibrium, equilibrium solution. Well, all the time, you may not know this value and you may have to find it. If you have something that is stable, then a small change of the initial condition gives a solution that tends towards the equilibrium. What that means is these values above and these values below are heading towards that equilibrium. If you went, if you graph this way, way out here, these would basically look like they were right on that line, okay? So that means it's stable. So a good way to know if something's graph it, this would be something that's unstable. So in other words, if a small change in the initial condition gives a solution that's starting to veer away, Okay, so as, as t goes to infinity. So as you can guess, a question on the test would be, um, I will give you a, a function, maybe that general one, I'll ask you to find for different values, and I'll ask you if it's stable or not. I don't have a problem with you telling me if it's stable or not, just flat out by graphing it. Okay, if you plug values in here, you're going to see that these values are getting large, they're getting further and further away from then whatever your equilibrium um, solution is, either above or below. But then there might be a time that I don't give you the equilibrium solution. So you have to find it, and I give you a differential equation. And this would be more like what you would see on the test. And then state if it's stable or unstable. I think the, the part that's hard for you guys on the test is if I give you this exact problem, and meaning I just change the differential equation, you're fine. But the problem is, is I put lots of words around it and then you don't know what to do. <laughs> it becomes a word problem. Um, as I always tell you during my test, come up here and ask me, is this what you mean to do? Some of you guys are good at doing that. Some of you just slam your paper out and walk out. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> or Nick, don't look at this. <laughs> and so, um, and I've, I've started to notice a pattern. It's that corner. So, see, if y'all would have said over here. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> We don't even like to talk about that area. <laughs> All right, so I want to find this equal. So I set my differential equation to zero. I set it equal to zero. Of course, I'm going to solve for B. So I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do algebra. Maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so I just distributed this. Now I'm going to go one. Why can't you just divide zero by two? Well, two. OK, you could do that. <laughs> And so, and so I've solved it, and I've solved it for B, so this is my equilibrium solution. So I could go ahead and graph that. I could draw this on a graph, and it would be the, the line Y equals 10, okay, or in this case, B. So that's my equilibrium solution. So I can write my general solution. So now you know, um, I think that was you asking me, yes, about that value of A. That's what that value is. So y'all should have something that kind of sort of looks like that in your Nemo project. He thinks his project's hard. <laughs> Men do. <laughs> it's not that that hard. All right, so here's my general solution. So here now would be um, Rachel's question. Well, I don't know what C equals. Well, I didn't give you any initial amount. I could go in and just pick some initial values here. Like what I did was went one above and one below. But, and then I could solve for C if I wanted to. But I could just simply graph this and C with a, ignore the constant basically, say it's one if you want to. And I can see what's happening is certain, certainly that these are going away from my equilibrium solution. So this, this right here would be exactly a test question. Again, there might be other words in it, meaning that it's an actual drug, you know, or something, caffeine leaving the body after so many hours, is it stable or unstable? But it, it, would, look, it would be something that would look just like this.